hello guys you're welcome to another interesting tutorial i am yinky and in this tutorial i'll be showing you 12 amazing ways to use the hemming gum and the this is an example of hemming gum i'm holding a hemming gum you can get it in white color and black color also so if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so before the end of this tutorial as lots of amazing tutorials await you here we share sewing tutorials the high wise and also sewing tips are also shared on this channel so here you can see all you need in this tutorial is your steam iron and um, your hemming gum so i'll be taking you through the various ways in which you can use your hemming gum the first one is using it on your neckline achieve a relaxed neckline so it, this is to just make sure that your neckline is relaxed and not bulky so you can do the, you can just place it the way i'm placing it on your neckline so this works especially for your lace fabric and also your Ankara fabric you can also use what when your lace fabric is bulky when you use this it works like magic so you're going to top stitch the neckline like so and um, even if you did not sew it in you can still push it inward if you have not sealed up your your the lining with the main fabric so you just go ahead and iron like so and the result is with immediate effect you just see the neckline relaxing so you can see how the neckline is very neat smooth and relaxed so i'll move to the next one number two for facings and uh, to achieve a relaxed armhole and neckline so in order to be able to do this just place your facing i believe you know how to cut your facing just and um, place it like so and the stitch with half of an inch the neckline notch it for a relaxed neckline move to the armhole also stitch with your sewing allowance and do i'm going to do the same thing for the second armhole also and after i have done this the next thing to do is placing our hemming gum and you cannot place your hemming gum until you turn to the right side so you can see this is the second arm hole I'm stitching. So after I'm done stitching this, we'll move to the next thing. The next thing to do is to turn to the right side like we normally do. I have tutorials on this, how you can use your facing to turn your dress and how you can do the um, a proper finishing when you are turning your blouse or your dress. You can use this to turn dresses. Uh, children wears this method can be used to turn children wears so in this process i have used the shoulder you just dip in your hand into the shoulder and you turn to the right side so so you can from here you can push in your hemming gum like so just pushing your hemming gum like so you can see how i'm putting in the hemming gum so after that then i hang on properly so just make sure you use like i told you it's not a dry iron you are going to use in this process you're going to use a steam iron and uh, you'll be able to get that uh, result so this is what we have you can see how relaxed and neat it is so you can use this for dresses for uh, ball dresses with children dresses for adult dresses also Number three is to turn trousers, shorts, and hems. So you can use this this hemming gum to turn the trouser hems. Like you have notched your the hem line, then you're going to place it like so. And uh, this is very very simple. And after you have maybe you've used your zigzag stitch to for the for it not to fray out. So the next thing is to put your hemming gum and um, iron it with the hemming allowance. So just iron it out like so for your trousers, your shorts, and so on. So after I have ironed in the hemming gum, this is what I have. Another interesting thing about the hemming gum is that your stitch lines will be hidden. It will be invisible while you use your hemming gum. 
so you can put like the strips of the hemming gum you can put like two strips or three strips of the hemming gum what i mean is that the hemming gum is like you have we have it in one inch width so i have not seen two two inches before but i don't know if it's available so you just put the strips the way you see it so the next one number four is to gum foam pad or assist in weak wording or interfaces like gum stay if your gum sometimes stuff gum stay very funny you buy it in the market and there is no gum at the back and you are trying to gum it is not staying so you can just get your hemming gum put it at the back and use it to assist that uh, weak gum so the this is a foam like the old way of um, constructing the bustier so the this is the foam that we use then so this type of foam we the only way we use it is to stitch so if you don't want to stitch it you just want to gum it like you're gumming your wording you're going to put the hemming gum at the back do it this way just trim off the excesses you can also after trimming off the excess you can still put the excess there under then high on it so the reason why i turn to the back is that it's better to hang on at the back it gums easily when i hang on at the back than the ironing at the front so it takes a longer period if i'm ironing from the front so just you can see it's gummed already so if i want to construct my bust here i can still use this hemming gum to achieve that so the number five way is to gum back up and to prevent um, wrinkles on cup area to make sure the cup area is smooth and um, also neat so i'm going to put the bra cup you can see the process how my bra cup look i use i hold a um, uh, dart on the bra cup so that's a tutorial for another time i have tutorials on how to make um, different types of corset so you can watch that on my channel so you can see how I'm placing it. Just put your, there's no secret about this. There's no big deal. Just pushing the enough hemming gum. Pushing enough hemming gum. You can see I'm placing it. There's no special way in placing it. Just pushing enough hemming gum where there's no, where, where there's no gum. So then apply the, the uh, steam. Apply the steam while you're high on it. You can see the way as we are ironing it is bringing out the cup shape so just check if there are areas left that you have not pushed in the emmy gum just push it inward and iron properly so after you are satisfied with the shape of your of the bra of the bra cup then you can check out what you have done and this is you can see it's we are getting the shape the shape very well so as the shape is coming out you just go ahead the under bust also make sure everything is perfect you can see so the bra is inside and the cup area you can see it it's it's visible and it's neat and you can see the the way we hang on it's the stitch line is almost invisible so this is i say this works like a magic also so you can see this one the other one that i push in a bra cup that i have not ironed you can see the difference so this is another magic that can be done through the hemming gum so the next one number six is for smooth bands belts and strands so you can use it to assist your bands and belts so if you want it to be smooth want it to be neat and uh, you want it to just be okay and perfect so just push it in strands of the hemming gum and after you have put it in next thing to do is just to apply the hot steam and uh, you achieve whatever you want to achieve through that this process is very very simple it's not complicated none of the processes are complicated either so just go ahead and hang on hang on like so as you are hang on you can see that it's just we are got just achieving that a smooth look so just hang on 
hyon so you can see wonders that can be done through your hemming gum it's amazing so and the number seven is to fix crinoline to cut hems and achieve a seamless look i love this this is the best part that i like so you you just achieve sometimes when you have you're done making that party dress the hemline of dresses the curved hem lines and you don't want to stitch don't want stitch lines you don't want to see the thread you want it to to be neat you want that neat and seamless look so just put your 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 crinoline like so stitch it in so you know there is a there is a special way that you use to place your crinoline so that your crinoline will relax well so just so as you're st you stitching you stitch on the tiniest tip of your crinoline what i mean is that your crinoline it matters to the the location at which you want the stitch on your crinoline so that your crinoline we are relaxed the one inch will relax to the back it will not be bulky i hope you understand what i'm trying to say so you stitch on the tip of the crinoline it's very very essential that you stitch on the tip of the crinoline so you can see where i want the stitch so i can as well turn to the back neatly like so so you can see that the allowance that i use to stitch is very tiny so that's when you can achieve a very neat m so like this now i'll just go ahead to my pressing table and when i get there the first thing is to first of all fold it like that the way i just folded it on the machine and uh, first of all without placing my aiming gum i'll first of all iron it like so so that it will relax so and crinoline responds to it very well so when you are on crinoline it relax immediately so i'll just iron it first after you have ironed it and you make sure that it's relaxed the next thing to do is to go ahead and uh, you can now start placing in the aiming gum so so after i have the next thing to do is to get the aiming gum and place it in on all the hem lines so i'll push it in through like so so as you are pushing it in just place it the way i placed it push it in and uh, iron immediately so as you are iron you notice that it's coming immediately so just iron like so then check if it's okay like i told you you can use two you can use three strands of aiming gum so so that the gum will work very well but here i'm using only one and that one is also okay it's gumming it so this is the back you can see how neat it is very very neat so this method can also be used so for children wears m lines of party dresses m lines of circular flares um, and so on so to make sure this stays very well you can still aim it so that means you'll be tacking it most very the thread will not be it will be an invisible thread it will be a matching color of thread and it will not be showing at all just to assist the crinoline to, to stick for a longer period of time and from here we move to the next number number eight to gum applique to fabric so in this process you're going to gum your different types of applique you can attach it to your fabric by placing your aiming gum underneath like so so just place your aiming gum like so push a lot of aiming gum under so after you have pushed it in you can anywhere you can find the strips of applique you just place it under like so then press it so like i told you just apply the steam and it will go immediately so just place it in pack enough of it inside so that it will go wherever you have the tiny strips cut tiny strips and put put there so as to gum it down 
So this is just to assist it. This does not prevent you from tacking. What I mean is that this does not prevent you from using your um, thread to tack it down, to hold it down also. But this, first of all, will work, will make your work easier. To first of all make your work easier because it has been placed already. You have placed it already where you want it to be. And the essence of tacking it is for it to be able to last for a longer period of time. So this process will first of all make you stabilize it. Make sure it's been placed where you want to place it. And afterwards you can go ahead and tack it down. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so before the end of this tutorial. If you have any comments, you can leave it in the comment section. I'm going to reply as soon as I see your comments. And um, we are almost done with this part. You can see how neat it is. It is very, very neat. It is sticked to the area we attach it to. Then we move to the next one, number nine. I also like this also because this also is like a, an high opener. So to stabilize your lace fabric on an underlining. Sometimes when you want to hold your dart, it seems very difficult whenever you are you, you're working with a lace fabric and an underlining. So such that when you are holding the dart, the dart goes another way and uh, you hold the dart will be held only on the lace fabric. I don't know if it has happened to you and not on the underlining and it makes the work very it makes the work to look unprofessional so but when you use this and you place your hemming gum under like so and you first of all iron it it makes it looks as if the lace and the underlining they are together they, they it, it will be separate i don't think you understand what i'm trying to say so and if you understand it it's i like that so you can see what i did just now it's as if the lace fabric and the underlining they are together so whatever you want to do, it will stay. If you want to hold that here, it will stay. If you want to do a, a bustier, it will be okay. Like this, check this out now. You can see the lace is diff is, is, is not attaching, it's not laying well on the underlining. So you can see how it is. If you want to hold it that here now, it will be so difficult. So, but here now, this is what I'm using to assist this now. So you can see this one is different from what I just showed you. So this is very okay. It's, they are together already. And that's the magic you can make with this. So the number 10 is to make pleats. You can use it to make pleats. You can. So I have put the hemming gum inside the pleats already. Just to hold the pleats together. This, this can be done without putting an hemming gum. But there are things, uh, there are ways you can make work easier and neater. So I just place it in, I push it inside the way I did for, for belts. So just place it in so that it will align, it will stay and it will stick. I push it inside before I only the pleats. You can use it to arrange pleats on, if you want to design, I just want to use this pleats to design a cup, the corset cup, corset panel. So the next one is the number 11. To gum and color pattern. So after you have traced out that and color pattern, the uh, patches. So you can just go ahead. Also can also work for you. Just iron like so. Iron like so. Iron it neatly, and it will stick to you the fabric interestingly you won't believe your gum can do this much as in like this is number 11 11 things that your hemming gum can be used to do so i just remember the 12th one and um, i have coupled these videos together before i remembered and uh, this is um, number 12 for the skirt ends and slits you can use it for your skirt hems and slits. You can see it, it's very like we did for our trouser hems and uh, and shorts. So, and that's the twelfth one that I just remembered. So we've come to the end of the tutorial. So, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Like, share, comment, and give us a thumbs up on this video. Thanks and God bless.